Today in our Project 200 build series, we're going to be installing one of the most important accessories for any touring four-wheel drive, a quality bull bar. When travelling remote Australia, an animal strike could quite easily immobilise the vehicle and strand you hundreds of kilometres from civilisation. Protection aside, bull bars are also useful for mounting driving lights, radio aerials and a recovery winch. They really are an essential accessory. When it comes to selecting a bull bar, there are two major decisions that you'll have to make. The first is the material of the bar, aluminium or steel. Aluminium bars are generally lighter than steel and they can be a good choice for a smaller four wheel drive or one that doesn't venture too far from civilization. But there are very few aluminium bars on the market that will protect the vehicle from a serious animal strike and the ones that will are pretty ugly. So for my needs, steel is the material of choice. With the material decided, the next step is choosing the brand and design. There's no shortage of different bars on the market these days, from both established brands and newcomers. Again though, the choice for me came down to picking a product that I knew I could rely on for safety and reliability. And with those two factors in mind, you can't go past a winch bar from ARB. I feel far more confident with their Australian engineering and manufacturing quality than I do of some unknown imported knockoff. And when you're out in the middle of nowhere, the last thing you want is equipment failure. The design of the winch bar integrates very well with the front of the 200 and features upswept wings for improved approach angles, a mounting system suitable for up to 12,000 pound winches, twin aerial and driving light mounts and integrated fog lights. Please enjoy the following step by step guide as we install the bar onto the 200. The first step is to remove the six screws securing the inner guard to the bumper bar. You'll need a T30 Torx key. The next step is to remove the plastic trim panels from underneath each side of the bumper bar. You'll need a 10mm socket for the five small bolts and a 12mm socket for the single plastic nut located next to the tow hook. Next, remove the four bolts holding on the lower side of the bumper bar using a 10mm socket or spanner. Next, with the bonnet open, we'll remove the plastic engine bay cover. It's retained entirely by plastic clips which are opened by pushing down in the centre then levering the entire clip out of position. The clips and the cover will be reused. Next, we're going to be loosening the top of the grill. The first step is to remove the three retaining bolts. Then gently pull the top of the grill towards the front of the vehicle. The next major step is to prepare the factory bumper bar for trimming. First, apply masking tape to the upper surface of the bumper bar. You can then cut out the supplied templates and then temporarily tape them to the vehicle, starting with the driver's side. Mark along the wing template as shown, then continue the line along the bumper bar under the headlight. 10 millimetres below the bumper fold line. Next, trace over the inner template, then join your two lines together using a ruler or a straight edge. You can now remove the templates and repeat for the other side of the vehicle. Finally, using a long straight edge, join the lines from the inner templates together at the bottom of the grill. You can then remove the three plastic clips on the inside bottom of the grill and lift the entire bumper and grill assembly off the vehicle. Put it down on a non-abrasive surface, face down. Next, remove the grill from the bumper bar by carefully prying the series of small plastic tabs. Using a jigsaw, you can now cut along the line you've marked on the bumper bar. Be sure to keep your fingers clear and wear safety glasses to protect your eyes from flying debris. Moving back to the vehicle, you can now remove the foam absorber bar and the aluminium crash bar. These won't be reused. Then remove the beam mount brackets and retain the nuts for reuse. Next, remove the tow hooks and set them aside. Both the hooks and their bolts will be reused later. The next step is to mark and trim the power steering scoop on the driver's side and the plastic trim panel on the passenger side, as shown in the ARB instructions. With all the preparation work done, you can now refit the cut bumper bar and grill in place and secure it with all the original mounting systems from the upper side of the bumper bar. Then, fit the supplied pinch weld to the wings. As I'm not fitting a winch at this time, I'll move straight on to bull bar preparation. The first step is to fit the large rubber grommets to the holes in the uprights inside the upper area of the bull bar. You can then fit the four M6 cage nuts to the bottom inside face of the lower pan. Next, carefully slide on the rubber buffers, ensuring that you don't scratch the paint with the screws. Now it's time to begin fitting the mounting brackets. The first step is to install the two large clevis nuts into the rectangular holes about 150mm back from the front of the chassis. Insert the nuts into the inner face of the chassis and then push them through until they just protrude from the outer side. 
Ensure you don't drop them into the chassis rail or you'll never see them again. You can then install and fully tighten the stud into the clevis nut through the large hole in the front face of the chassis. Next, loosely fit the mounting brackets to each side using the supplied 8mm packers and flange nuts and the original equipment 10mm flange nuts removed earlier. Tap the outer flange of the mount brackets until they're hard up against the tow hook mount area and nip up the lowest outboard nut on each bracket. Then measure the brackets and make sure they're 935mm apart. It's finally time to start fitting the bull bar to the vehicle. With the aid of an assistant, carefully lift the bull bar into position, then loosely bolt it in using the supplied M12 bolts, flat washers and spring washers. Ensuring that the bull bar is centrally located on the vehicle, you can then loosely fit the cross brace to the underside of the lower pan and on top of the gussets in the mounting brackets using the M10 by 30 bolt and washer sets. Next you can correctly adjust the height of the bar, leaving about 15mm between the pinch weld on the cut bumper bar and the bull bar itself. You can then fully tighten all the mounting bolts and nuts. Finally, remove each tow hook bolt one at a time, then apply Loctite 262 or an equivalent before refitting the bolts. Next, using the 10mm pilot holes in the bull bar uprights as a guide, drill through the mounting brackets and fit the supplied M10 bolt and washer sets and tighten. The next step is to prepare and install the indicator, parking light and fog light assembly. Begin the installation by carefully cutting the four plastic tabs retaining the fog light blank, then slide the light into the two pivot holes and install the adjusting screw and spring. You can then insert the assemblies into the bar top first. It's easier to fit the top two clamps before fitting the assembly and then fit the lower clamps once it's inserted in the bar. Next, install the indicator and parking light assemblies into the back of the shroud with the supplied screws. You can then begin the wiring process by connecting the supplied loom to the parking light, indicator and earth wires on each side of the vehicle. I'm also connecting a trip wire for the fog light relay with the parking light wire. I found it easiest to remove the batteries to make the connections and I'm soldering the wires rather than using the supplied scotch clips for better reliability. Because I've already done some pre-wiring and I want to standardise my dashboard switches, I'm wiring the fog lights from scratch, but ARB do produce a complete wiring loom which would be an easier option in most cases. I've run all my fog light wiring inside split tube to protect from abrasion, while the main power to the relay comes by the accessory fuse box installed previously. I'm using Carling brand LED switches, which can be fitted neatly into the empty dash slots after enlarging them slightly. With the supply and switch connections made, you can connect the plugs for the parking light, indicator light assembly and the fog lights. Now that all the bull bar's electrical connections are complete, it's time to fit the centre stone tray and the wing splash panels, using the supplied bolts, captive nuts and tube spacers. You can then carefully trim the original plastic fender liners so they line up with the bull bar splash guards. The final step in the installation is to drill two holes in each fender liner, then secure them to the splash guards with the supplied bolts. The finished product looks great on the 200 and will provide an excellent platform for future accessories including a winch and driving lights. It's also delivered a substantial improvement in the 200's off-road ability thanks to the greatly improved approach angle. I hope you enjoyed our installation video for the 200's new ARB bull bar. Remember that you can watch as the build progresses by following the links to Project 200 on the Australian Images website. See you next time.